my pa- patient first. You should give it to me first. So the lab is scared. The lab depends on the doctor for the business, for the prescription. So the so lab okay, okay, okay. Next time I'll give it to you. I won't give it to the patient. That's, what, that's how it happened. It's a, it's a custom. It's not a law. You know, and, I'm so excited about that. I think that's awesome. Awesome yeah. that that was reversed because I used to have to yeah. fight to get copies of my lab work. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I know. I figured, you know, you took my blood. I need to know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's. And there's a reason why, yeah. that's why they didn't give it to you because they didn't want you to react. They didn't want you to call the doctor first. They didn't want the doctor to call you first. And the doctor's too busy. He gets his report, puts it on the desk for, for three, four days. Hey, HIV, nobody cares. Positive, nobody cares. Who's Edmund Chen? They don't care. They don't know who he is. You know, three, four days later, he says, okay, Doc, Edmund, you know, you got HIV positive. Sorry. Oh, it's like, he's God, you're speaking to me. I'm going to die now. You know what I mean? The other thing is that I have found that when doctors are not current, in other words, the patient won't necessarily know what are optimal levels, what are the current day levels. We know that you should be taking a minimum of 5,000 units a day of D3, right? But if the doctors aren't up to date, even the levels they're going to be talking about, it won't even be on the radar for the patient to be told uh, these I, things. Let me just uh, correct a little bit. It is on the radar. It's just that they didn't see it. Every test report, if you demand that you get a copy, which you are under the law allowed to, you will see every value. By law, the lab is required to give you the reference range. Oh, okay. I and, didn't know that. That's good. Yes. By law, they, are allowed to do, they must do that. And the reference range, unfortunately, is age-based, meaning that if you state it on your form 60, then they give you the reference range of the most healthy 60 at that point and the sickest, yes, the guy who died yesterday at 60, the levels. They compare you to 60s. So when they say normal, they are actually saying, hey, among the 60s, you're normal. So you should first check Against your own peers, okay, age peers, 60, let's say you're 60, you check the 60, their reference range, and if you're normal, man, you're lucky, okay? You just, you, you just, you're just normal among the 60s. But like I said earlier, hey, you think you, do you think you are uh, really healthy? No, you're not, it, because, because you should compare to the 20-year-old. Now, then next, you move your eyes, you move your eyes to the next reference line, which says for the 20-year-old, which is also, they will also give it to you, and if you, they don't give it to you, you can call and ask for the 20, 20-year-old reference range, and you compare yourself to the 20-year-old range. Now, if you are abnormal, hey, which is to be expected, because you are 60, then you are abnormal in my, in my view, medically, today, after the Nobel Prize. So <laughs> anybody... Anybody who has a level of any bioendocormal, not comparable to the normal range of a 20-year-old is sick, is diseased, and should have medical attention immediately. This is my definition. Isn't that an anti-aging, life extension, fountain of youth paradigm? Yes. Okay. It's an optimization paradigm, is it not? Yes. Yes, it is. So you're comparing apples to apples at this point. Yes, and especially in view of the Nobel Prize. Now, if the Nobel Prize didn't, didn't, wasn't given to tel, uh, the, the telemarine field this, this year, I, I'm in a weaker position. Okay, I'm arguing, all right? But now I'm not. After the Nobel Prize came about arguing, I'm saying to, to the public, you are stupid if you don't check your hormones that control your telomeres, which control your lifespan and your disease of yourself. But doctor, you know that there's been a kind of a worldwide scare and bad propaganda surrounding human growth hormone. Not even related to bioidentical hormones of, you know, the male and female hormones or the thyroid hormones, but there's been a worldwide kind of propaganda scare, stay away from human growth hormone, they don't know enough about it, it's not normal, it's not natural, it can hurt you, you may get cancer if you're a woman. You know, there's been a lot of misinformation around it. And speaking yeah, of... misinformation. Yeah, so speak, speak to, if you would, what is human growth hormone 
in its beginnings, how did you get involved with it? You've been a long-standing yeah. proponent of human growth. Hormone. You are validated you are that validated this that increases this longevity, increases longevity drastically. Yeah. Talk drastically. about it. Yes. Talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The human growth hormone is actually a hormone made by the pituitary gland, and centuries ago, the we know medicine, medical doctors know the human growth hormone is necessary for growth of a, a, a child into adult height. And we thought wrongfully that that was the only function that it has. And it turned over the last, uh, 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 since the 60s, uh, and actually the Russians uh, brought it to our attention first. The, the Russians uh, uh, researched this area and, and the athletes were all using growth hormones. And if you remember in the 60s and 70s, the, the Russians sweeped all the gold medals at that time. And n n nobody can understand why only the Russians get the gold medals and nobody else. And it turned out that they are all on growth hormone. And that is when the research on growth hormone <clears throat> became keen and interest in saying, what, what else does it do? What else does it do besides growing tall? And it turns out that it's the reverse, that that when our growth hormone, when we reach our adult height and growth hormone starts dropping, it shouldn't have dropped. It should have kept up uh, uh, high. And because of this dropping, we get old. In fact, if we, we kept our growth hormone constantly high, we, we, we would not age, and we all of us would look to the God promised age of 120, easy and perhaps beyond, exceeded what God's promise, and, and that's what we found now. Uh, but at the same time, though, uh, the two things make growth hormone, uh, gave growth hormone bad reputation. The athletes from the Russians, uh, especially from Russia, started them, and now every, many, many U.S. <laughs> athletes also abuse growth hormone secretly and got caught and all of that, uh, is, is that the, the, it happens that growth hormone, once you use it, make you young. That's why the athletes use them. It makes them superior. What does youth mean to you? If you're 60 years old, I promise you to make you superior and youthful. What does it mean? It means you can move faster than your other 60-year-old. And that is, that is, you're doing exactly what the athletes are doing. They're doing just to win, but you're doing for health. It's a different reason, that's all. You know, but the athletes, oh, and another bad thing is that athletes overdose them. Okay, shoot large amounts and cause harm. Now, the people say, oh, growth hormone is harmful, harmful. Well, let me tell you, if I ask you to drink water, 60 tons of it a day, see if it'll kill, kill you. You know, if I tell you to eat 100 meals a day for 10 days, see if it'll kill you. Even food and water can have side effects. How can growth hormone not? You know, it's unfair. Can you say water then is dangerous to your health? Can you say food is dangerous to your health then? You know, and, and, and they, that's basically what happens is the athletes use them, uh, the, so the government put a law, and, and the U.S. government put a law in the, 60, uh, in the 70s in the books for the athletes, actually, but it didn't say the athletes. You know, that would be to, to discriminate people uh, under the Constitution. That law says anybody, all right? So, the, so, so, so all the governments put laws to, uh, to prohibit people from overdosing. But they don't say that neither. They just say, for example, the U.S. law, uh, which uh, in 1994 I contested, I stood up against the law. Uh, the law says, and still on the book, by the way, it's not repealed by Congress. That's, a, that's shocking. He. Yeah, it's a he. Whoever you, he, of course, the doctor, right? He, whoever prescribes or dispenses school hormone to anyone, not a child, talking about discrimination and unconstitutionality. Anybody who's not a child is guilty of a felony punishable by five years in prison and $250,000 per account. That is still on the books today, 2010. All over America? All over America. Is it internationally uh, on the books? No, 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 no. It's a U.S. law. It's federal regulations. It's, it's federal law, only U.S., within the border of USA. Then how come, for example, Sylvester Stallone got arrested a few years ago in an airport for having HGH <laughs> with him? I mean, that's absurd. That's exactly. Many, many, Australia has a stiff law on growth hormone following U.S. And Canada has a very stiff law on growth hormone, just like U.S. So many countries follow the footsteps of U.S. in establishing such a, 
a, a crazy law on growth hormone without specifying the type of individual athlete that they want to prevent against. 